In our last video, we saw Caratelli's theorem, and the theorem talked about a special type of measure called a complete measure. So in this video, prior to proving Caratelli's theorem, let's see what complete measures are. So we have a measure space, x, a z, with a sigma algebra m, and a measure, mu, defined on the sigma algebra. So we say that mu is a complete measure if, whenever we grab a set f that is on our sigma algebra and such that mu of f is zero, so we grab a set of measure zero, if we have another set e subset of f, then the measure of e is also equal to zero. And this definition might seem a bit silly because because of the monotonicity that we know mu satisfies for just being a measure, we know that the measure of E would be smaller than or equal to the measure of F. And that gives us that the measure of E has to be zero, because we would have zero less than or equal to the measure of E less than or equal to the measure of F, and this one equals to zero. So this immediately implies this. But what's important about complete measures is that we can actually write this, because we're able to calculate the measure of a set whenever the set E is an element in our sigma algebra. If E is not in the sigma algebra, then we cannot try and measure it, because it's just the domain of our measure. So really what complete measures are telling us is subsets of sets of measure zero are in the sigma algebra, and they will obviously have measure zero. But the important thing is those sets are in the sigma algebra. Those sets are measurable. And having complete measures is a desirable property. Let's say that you're working with some measure and you find a set of measure zero. You want to be able to work easily with that set, and working easily with a set would be being able to calculate, for example, the measure of the subsets. So imagine if your measure is not complete, you have no idea if the subsets of your set are measurable or not. But having just this property, having the property of a measure being complete, gives you complete comfort in working with this measure. But now there's an important theorem that we will see now. And so the theorem says this. We have a measure space and we call n the set of elements in the sigma algebra that measure zero. And we create this new set n bar made of all the unions of sets E union F, where E is an element in our original sigma algebra and f is a subset of some set n of measure zero. So the theorem tells us that this set n is a sigma algebra, and there's a unique extension mu bar of mu to a complete measure that will be defined in this sigma algebra. So this mu bar will go from the sigma algebra n bar to zero infinity. And this theorem is just great because it's telling us whenever you have a measure that you cannot work with because you don't know if it's complete or not, well, you can just extend your sigma algebra to a larger one, m bar, and then define a new measure there. But what's important here is that this mu bar is an extension of the measure mu. So what happens is that if e is already an element in the sigma algebra m, then mu of e, mu bar of e, the new measure, will be equal to the original measure. So you don't lose the measures of the sets you already could measure. But now what happens when you have, for example, a subset of a set of measure zero? Well, in that case, let's say that f is a subset of n and n is a set with measure zero, then we can write f 
as the empty set union f. And the empty set is an element in our original sigma algebra. And f is a subset of n with measure 0. So we have that any subset of a set of measure 0 can be written in this way. And so they belong to m bar, to the new sigma algebra. And therefore, it is measurable with this new measure mu bar. And the proof for this video gives us even more. It tells us whenever you graph some set E union F in the new sigma algebra M bar, then the mu bar measure of this new set is going to be the measure of E because here E union F was with E in the original sigma algebra and F subset of N that's an element of measure zero. So it's telling you, hey, whenever you have a subset of a set of measure zero, give it measure zero because in this case, we will have that mu bar of F as f was written as the empty set union f, then this could be equal to mu of the empty set, which is zero. So it makes sense. It is consistent. Mu bar is a measure and it's the unique, it's a unique extension of mu. So whenever you're working with a measure space and your measure is very uncomfortable or you know no properties about it, but you need to measure subset of sets of measure zero, then you can always just extend your measure, extend your sigma algebra and get a complete measure to work with.